everyone and a happy Victober to you. It feels so lovely to say those words. This is actually my very first um, Victober video I'm filming for 2019. Um, basically just having a chronic illness. I never know how many good energy days I'm going to have in a week and I really didn't want to have a serious deficit of Victober content going up for you. So I figured if I just start in July, then I'm sure I can have a respectable number of videos going up. Also, it's nice to pre-film a lot because during Victober, I want to be either reading Victorian literature, watching Victober videos going up, or watching uh, Victorian period dramas. So here I am in July filming the very first Victober video and it just tides over my excitement uh, for Victober a bit more and helps me um, kind of wait, kind of wait out all of the days until Victober is actually here. So the video I want to do today is kind of the most iconic Victorian novels that I haven't read. Kind of those books that I've heard a lot about growing up, reading in books, hearing about it through other books, uh, hearing it referenced in movies or even songs, and uh, I have not read them. And most of them, if I'm being honest, I haven't read because I think I'm not going to like them. That's what it is. So I thought for this video, it would be fun to kind of give you maybe what I think the book's going to be like slash why I think I won't like it. And then maybe in a year, I would do a recap of if I had read those. Um, although I don't want to make this too much like my like five star TBR Victober predictions video. Anyhow, let's just get into the books. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books on this list for you. The first is Kidnapped. Um, I don't, so Kidnapped, I, okay, I know why I think I'm not going to like Kidnapped. Kidnapped, I think I'm not going to like because it is going to be very plot focused and not very character focused, which I find often in Victorian either mysteries or like adventure tales the character development kind of suffers. Um, particularly because character development, even in like domestic novels, isn't always there in Victorian books. So I'm hoping that I'm wrong about this. I know Becky, my friend Becky, who does Talking Amongst Our Shelves with me, um, she really liked this. But she also really liked The Count of Monte Cristo and The Count of Monte Cristo I DNF'd after about 300 pages. It was just very um, plot centric. So we shall see if I am wrong. This one I'm pretty sure is on my Victober five star TBR predictions, but my list was way too ambitious and I didn't get to like half of them. So I'm going to move on to the next book and that is Treasure Island. Another one. So I've heard so much about it. I've seen Muppets Treasure Island. So <laughs> that's my only experience with the story. I think it's just going to be very plot centric, but if it's told in an interesting way, then I could love it. So I hope I'm wrong. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is one I very much should not be intimidated by because it is so short. I know Kate from the novel Nomad really enjoyed it. However, Kate has such a wonderful analytic mind and she's able to look at like the literary merits of it. What were the things they were trying to say at this time? She saw that with The Heart of Darkness and The Heart of Darkness, unfortunately, really, really bored me. So I think if I had more of like an English student's mindset, frame of mind going into Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I could maybe enjoy it. But I think it's going to be very plot based. And um, I won't be that compelled by either Dr. Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. And I hope I am proven wrong. Then the next one is The Importance of Being Earnest. I think um, the only reason I haven't read this one is that it's in play format. I definitely have a bias. Um, I like reading Victorian novels, not so much plays and short stories. And each year for Victober, in past years, I've tried to, you know, branch out and read poetry or, you know, read short stories. And I always end up gravitating more towards the novel. So it's something I'm trying to work on. And I think from everything that I know about the importance of being earnest, it's something I would really love. So then moving on to Vanity Fair, this big behemoth of a book I'm actually going to try to conquer this year. I did try it just a bit in like January um, by um, the app Serial Reader, but I found that 
Well, I kept forgetting to read it for one, doing my little snippet. It was like too divided up. I definitely want to take my time with it, but it was like a 10 minute reading session. And so then I think it would have taken like 70 days, something like that. So I just wanted to do it over the course of a month. That's what I'm going to try to do. I think it's mainly intimidation that I haven't read this one. I actually think I could become attached to a fair number of characters. And um, I have, you know, heard from several people that they just loved Vanity Fair. So I'm going to, you know, hopefully come to love it myself. Now, when I made this list a couple months ago, so I guess I made this list in like May, I had not yet read Dracula. Um, because I thought, again, very plot based, I don't know if I'm going to like it. However, I did put it on my Victober five star TBR list last year because two readers Becky again, um, and then Jess, who is on Bookstagram as Dickens and Docs, gave really compelling reasons that I could possibly like Dracula. So read Dracula this month. And guess what? I loved it. I absolutely loved this book. Um, yes, the characters might not be that three dimensional, but I still because they were in such dire straits, because they're like up against this super, super creepy Count Dracula. I was really rooting for them. Like I really felt invested in them. And so I think I was just so motivated, like you guys have to live, you have to live or he wins. And I ended up absolutely loving it. So that is a spoiler alert for my Victober five star TBR video or whatever. But I absolutely loved it. So I was really so happy to be proven wrong. It was told so compellingly. Yeah, it was a blast. Okay, then last on the list is Black Beauty. Um, I remember seeing the movie as a kid, although I don't remember much about it. Animal stories, I'm not sure about. I don't know about. I think when done well, they can be really excellent. But the thing that's sad about animal stories is you kind of know with most of them going in, it's not going to end with the animal still living. So that's really, that's a hard pill to swallow. Um, so I think I've just kind of thought, oh, it's an animal story. And not that I always don't like them. Like I love the All Creatures Great and Small series by James Harriet, but I think I'm expecting to kind of like not really love it. So we'll see. I definitely am going to read Black Beauty because I want to read so many Victorian novels. And um, yeah, those were the seven books I had on the list. Let me know in the comments down below the most iconic Victorian novels you have not read. And let me know down below if you're trying any of those out this Victober, I hope you're having a lovely day, lovely Victober, and I will be back for another video soon. Bye.